I saw the eggs on the glass and then I saw that there was eggs on the rock. The interesting thing with the similar that I've noticed though is you can see they're hanging around together now. Died suddenly pretty much in front of my eyes. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my July 2021 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one, Neolamprologus tetrocephalus. And this is my basically uh, breeding pair. So that guy there is the male. And that is the female that he spawns with. So you can see that there are some other fish in here that I keep as dither fish to spread the aggression because he will end up killing that female. Now, I know that's the female that he spawns with because there are eggs in this tank. And I have just noticed them. I've just gotten home from work and I've noticed that, uh, yeah, they, I, I saw the eggs on the glass and then I saw that there was eggs on the rock. Now, I don't know if the male has fertilized the spawn. Uh, the female has in the past spawned by herself. Uh, and obviously those eggs were unfertile. And uh, the last few occasions that they have spawned, the male has fertilized the eggs, however has failed to raise the fry. Uh, I've tried to raise the fry myself and um, have failed. As long as I've kept the fry alive in an egg tumbler uh, to the free swimming stage was about seven days. Um, all other occasions have been um, a failure. Very difficult, challenging fish to breed and uh, some people might have more luck than me with a breeding pair, but my pair have spawned probably at least 10 times. I've honestly lost count. And uh, okay, so the male's going near the eggs, so he must know that there's eggs there. Here comes the female. Yeah, he knows there's eggs there. So he, because he's in the area, I suspect they are fertile. He's just patrolling the tank. Now it can take the other threats out have a better chance of that spawn uh, being a successful spawn and them hatching. But again, he could kill the female if I do that. And he's so aggressive, he will defend those fry. Uh, he's bitten me a number of times and uh, broken the skin and I've bled. Even though he doesn't look that big on camera, he has got a good set of chompers on him. So, beautiful, beautiful male tetracephalus. Yeah, you can see he's looking after that spawn, which is good to see. So interesting, I didn't expect this. I had one of my subscribers ask me how the threats were going a couple of weeks back uh, in the June 2021 Fish Room Update Tour. Nothing had been doing for months. And today I start filming uh, the July Fish Room Update Tour for 2021. And lo and behold, they've had a spawn. So big news in the fish room. I don't hold much hope for the fry. We'll see. Uh, at least the female has spawned on a rock rather than on the sand bed. They went through a period of time where they were spawning on the sand bed. But uh, see, so that's the female he spawned with. He has, he's not chasing her away like the other one. So uh, it is a good sign that he's hovering around the eggs, not eating them. Look at that female, see? The interaction. It's funny seeing how different species of cichlids interact with each other after they've spawned or. Um, even like, you know, the trets, they're very, very aggressive, like Tanganyika and Cichlid. You need a very large tank for them. And really these guys should be in a six by two by two foot tank. This is a four foot by two foot by two foot uh, tank. So on the smaller side for these guys. And yeah, they need a very large territory. Having do the fish in the aquarium will protect the female from the male. And uh, yeah, you see, they do a similar behavior when, they're, when they've spawned to the Leilupis, they shimmer their bodies. Uh, you know, if the female swims away from the male, he'll chase her, just like the Leilupi male will chase the female if she tries to swim away from him. Uh, if she surrenders, or if she basically submits to his dominance and shimmers her body, he will not chase her away. So, there you go. See how these guys go over the next <laughs> few days. Hopefully this one will be a success, but again, I'm not holding uh, my breath for this one. 
So I haven't shown this aquarium that much pretty much ever since I bought these guys. And in this tank is Neal Emperologus similis and some Alto Emperologus compressorceps, the gold variety. So you can see there's three of those in the aquarium and there are two similis as well. Now the similis do look very similar to uh, Neal Emperologus multifasciatus but they are different. They actually do grow a little bit larger than multis and they've got a couple uh, extra bars on their gill plate and head than multis do. So they look a little bit more uh, striking, got a little bit more contrast than the than your more commonly known multis have. Yeah, I'm hoping to spawn these guys. I do believe I've got a pair with the similis here. I do believe they are a pair. They are always courting and going into the same shell and I wouldn't be surprised if they've spawned yet. However, because they're with the uh, gold compressor seps, those gold compressor seps are fry eating machines. They have evolved to eat fry and that's why they have that compressed body shape. It allows them to access into tight gaps between rocks, into little crevices, uh, and they are able to gobble up fry very quickly. So if the similis have had a spawn in this aquarium, I haven't seen it yet, and it's unfortunately highly likely that the compressor seps have eaten those fry. But these guys have finished their quarantine, so I am going to be splitting them up. They are going to be going into their own aquariums. So I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I will be doing that soon and documenting it on my channel. Uh, the interesting thing with the similis that I've noticed though is, if you take a look at the shells, there's only one that's upright. You can kind of call the one on the left here at the front. Uh, in a kind of upright position, it's almost on its side uh, and against the glass. Now, yesterday, I turned all of them, those three shells, on their correct side, and I can guarantee to you guys that the similis have turned them back over so no other fish can take up residence in those shells and they've only left one shell turned the correct way up which is the shell that they always go into so some interesting behavior with the similis there uh, if there was uh, sand in this aquarium you can be pretty sure that they would bury all the shells they're not using and only keep the shell they are using uh, open for them to access just to make sure predators do not move in close by uh, so, so some interesting behavior there from the similar so I can't wait to move these guys into their future aquarium I'm going to be doing that over the next coming days and I think it's going to look pretty cool uh, once I set that up for them but yeah and the Alto Lamprologus compressorceps beautiful gold coloration there they're going into their own aquarium one of the two foot by two foot by 14 inch high tanks so they'll have one of those massive tanks to themselves to grow out into adults and hopefully we'll get a pair out of them as well but that will be at least a year or two off because they are quite small now i thought i'd give you guys an update on the white calvus spawn the alto lamprologus calvus see how they're doing they've just had a feed of baby brine shrimp so you can probably see their little orange bellies are full of brine shrimp which is fantastic now like I say in all these videos, you can see how much they sit on the sand bed. It's been, they've been in here for almost two weeks. Uh, and you know, they are able to swim into the water column to pick up food. And then, yeah, they just sit on the sand bed. So keep preaching to you guys, make sure you keep your sand bed clean if you intend to breed calvus or compressor seps. Because these guys sit on the sand bed for a good period of time. But they're doing really well. I haven't noticed any deaths. They are quite tiny. Uh, and uh, they are hard to see if the, they were to unfortunately uh, die you wouldn't really know it until the numbers really start to decline but uh, these guys seem to be doing well uh, we haven't reached that uh, one month die off period yet so I'll know in a few more weeks but yeah so far so good touch wood tank getting an update is this one and it is my Lamprologus oscillatus gold tank so uh, if you've been on my channel for a, at least a month or two, you would have seen a video come out a couple of weeks back where I showed that uh, one of my female breeders had died suddenly pretty much in front of my eyes and uh, I was pretty distressed about that. Over the next few days, the male then died 
and I was left with one female and so this was a breeding trio and then the female died I haven't said that yet um, you know I had the female died it was pretty distressing to see her pretty much pass away right before my eyes and then once the the male died a few days later uh, I just I just didn't want to talk about it anymore and um, and then the, the second female died so I lost my trio in, in the span of a month and yeah just thought I'd quickly show you guys this tank because I I want to tell you everything that happens in the fish room, regardless of if it's good news or bad news. Uh, obviously, it's pretty crappy news, but uh, yeah, that's life. That's what happens when you run a fish room. Uh, you get the good and the bad. You see the fryer doing quite well. I'm not sure what caused the die off of all the, the off the parents. All the other fish in the fish room are fine. Something must have stressed these guys out. Uh, I do believe Ockies can get stressed out a lot easier than other species of cichlids and unfortunately I lost my breeding trio in the span of about a month. Yeah, you can see the fry are fine, doing really well. And I've got uh, two other tanks full of Ockie fry. Now, as you can see the sand bed looks quite dirty and that's because I haven't had the breeding trio in here constantly digging, stirring up the sand bed, you know, uh, uh, renewing it as they uh, move from shell to shell to breed, and that's why this tank does look quite dirty. I'm waiting for the fry to get a little bit larger. They're going to be going into their own grow-out tank in the top row, and this will be the new home for the gold Alto Lamprologus compressor seps. So this tank is getting redone. The next tank getting an update is my black Alto Lamprologus calvus tank. I introduced the two that I purchased uh, almost two months ago now to this aquarium. So I had two large, what I suspect, male Alto Lampologus calvus in this aquarium already, in this, established in this tank. And they are quite large. I was a little bit nervous about introducing the, the, new two, the two new ones. So this guy here is a new one and is the larger of the two that I introduced to this aquarium. So there's the other one there, you see how small it is compared to the um, other two that I had in the aquarium. So this is one I already had in the aquarium and is the most dominant calvus in the tank. And this one here was the subdominant calvus that was in this aquarium. So the guy above the shell is getting belted up by uh, the guy underneath the cave. And um, since I've introduced the smaller two black calvus, the uh, dynamic in this aquarium has shifted. Things have calmed down a little and there's not as much aggression as there used to be. So I do suspect now that I have three males in this aquarium. So the three at the front of the aquarium are I'm pretty sure are males. And that little one that you saw go in underneath the cave at the back there on the right uh, there, I think could possibly be a female, hopefully. And you can see they're not bashing up the little one. Uh, it was getting bashed up by the fish is swimming behind right now when they were both in quarantine. Uh, but now, yeah, that there's four calvus in the aquarium, the aggression is really spread out. So, really suggest you guys do that, like you saw in the Tret aquarium, the Neolamprologus tetracephalus, spread the aggression out amongst the cichlids. So, not any one fish is getting targeted by another fish. Reduce the stress of your of your fish by doing that. Uh, by on the other hand, you don't want to overstock the aquarium. So, it is a fine balance. Uh, yeah, everyone knows their place in this aquarium now. It took about a week for things to settle down, and um, yeah, they're all happy at the moment. So really, really pleased about that. In saying that, though, I am going to re-aquascape this aquarium. It isn't going to look like this. I've only added some rocks in this aquarium recently, just to again break up the territories as I introduce the new fish from their quarantine. Uh, you don't want to introduce new fish in an established aquarium without doing something to the aquascape because the territories will be set already. So if you break up the aquascape when you're introducing new fish, you're going to have minimal, uh, try to minimize the chance for fights, for the potential for fights amongst your fish by uh, redoing the aquascape, kind of break up the territories. So yeah, these guys are doing quite well. When I did introduce the new two uh, calvus into this tank, this guy here at the front was having a lot of fights with the most dominant calvus. You can see they're hanging around together now. Um, again, I do suspect these three are males, uh, but 
I also do suspect that Calvus use size to identify uh, the opposite sex. So as that guy in the middle there is a lot smaller than this one, there is a potential there that this uh, male here suspects that that one is a female. That's something that I've observed, not something that uh, I'm 100% positive on, but I have observed that with my Calvus. These two Calvus were my original pair. Uh, this one here used to be smaller than this one over in the cave and they were a pair and they would defend their territory uh, all the time and then as this calvus above the shell grew larger and larger the fights began now they're the same size as each other and they constantly fight so that's my theory on how calvus potentially identify the opposite sex again i might be incorrect there but it's something i have definitely observed now with uh two fish with this uh dominant calvus so there you have it guys, my July 2021 Fish Room Update Tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.